Good afternoon, Anatoly. Today we're in one of the most uniquely innovative places, at the site of your Sky Center, which is located at the Science and Technology Park in Sharjah. The first phase of the new urban transport project implementation was presented here six months ago, where you showed the distinguished guests, the international media, not only the complex in a tropical version, but also the basic infrastructure needed for it. The event aroused great public interest. At the same time, you announced further phases of the complex construction. How are things now? And what has been done recently? How is the work progressing? We are not stopping our work for a minute. We continue with the innovative new type of urban transport project implementation in Sharjah. You have correctly noted that about a year ago, we started a pilot operation of Test Track 1 with a flexible string rail flyover, the length of which is about 500 meters long. There are three spans here, 100 meters, 200 meters, 100 meters, and 50 meters each on non-tensioned sections. The total length of the track is about 500 meters. It should be noted that our complex includes not only freight and passenger rolling stock of the new innovative type, it also includes all the necessary infrastructure of the second level. These are the rolling stock maintenance stations. This is a passenger station. This is a rail string track structure, power supply and communication system, engineering networks, and other elements. During this time, we have managed in the field in this heat, based on real factors, to carry out tests and pilot industry optimization of all major processes, elements, units, technical processes, to execute operating rules for automatic control systems, resolve station maintenance issues. We also have a rail string flyover, an automatic control system, a lot of engineering networks, landscaping, and other structural elements. The next important step was the certification of the U-Sky Transport and Infrastructure Complex in the Tropical Industrial Solution, with all essential structural elements according to international standards in the United Arab Emirates, which we successfully completed in 2021. The requirements and standards in the Emirates are in the line with those in the world. All these previous work allowed us to determine the optimal transport and infrastructure solution. Two more test lines are currently under construction at the U-Sky Center. Here I am at the first passenger station. It is small because it is a test station and there is a little passenger traffic. By the way, here is the certificate of conformity which confirms the certification of our complex. Exactly as a complex. Look how many components there are here. The technology, the nodes, the elements, the station, the supports, all that is a certified complex. We're now going to ride the Unicor in the tropical version. We made it in VIP version because the first passenger was to be Sultan bin Muhammad al Kashmi, the ruler of Sharjah. And in fact, we have redesigned the city's six-seater unicar in the regular version into a four-seater in the tropical version. We are inside the tropical unicar. There are two armchairs made and two seats for accompanying persons. The air conditioning is beefed up here and the energy storage battery is reinforced because it takes three times as much energy to cool and condition as it does to ride. Here we are now accelerating 18, 20, 25 kilometers an hour. There is not much speed here because the track is short, all the more so as it is with saddles that are designed for 60 kilometers per hour. That's why we are passing at lower speeds. When there are city tracks, with the stations not far from each other, the speeds will not be high. For urban lines, where the stations are not too far from each other, this track is ideal because it is very cheap. Here, the track structure, if you take the double track, weighs only 50 kilograms per linear meter. You can build our sagging type string road from the same length of a P65 railway rail. It really is a unique system. 
When it was certified, the certifier was amazed at the parameters we achieve. In terms of efficiency, in terms of resource consumption, we have the lowest consumption of materials. The high parameters are also in terms of reliability, durability, exposure to the full range of temperatures, as it is the tropics here, and in the sun the structure can heat up to 70-80 degrees Celsius. And the fact that we have been actually operating for about a year, we can say that this is not a test operation, but a commercial one. We just don't take money for tickets, but we ride a lot for people, showing them the technology. Who has ridden the cable cars, they understand. It's heaven and earth compared to our roads. In cable cars, there is an unstable rope that wobbles, especially from the wind. The speed there is generally 20 km per hour, and that is considered high speed for this type of road. The speed limit for ropeways is 40 km per hour. If you take the urban transport market, this solution, which we have been operating for about a year now, is the ideal solution. There is also a freight vehicle standing here to transport containers. That was a unique case altogether. We were planning the track for passenger transportation. And the unicar has a certain weight, a certain mass. And it is this weight that the track structure is designed for. But it does have safety margins. Three times and even five times. The unicar weighs about four tons. When the question of how to view the cargo track came up, I decided to make the cargo container a small one. This could be our standard, in which everything will be included for transportation, as it's bigger than a suitcase or a boot of a car, which we also carry all sorts of stuff in. So we made a small container with a capacity of up to 5 tons. It is also in the tropical design. At the same time, we operate both the city and freight rolling stock on the line. So the line shows that it has quite a large safety margin because the load on it has actually more than doubled. It's operating normally in normal mode. Our freight costs are very low, in the range of $1 per 100 tons per kilometer or one cent per ton kilometer. That is, we can move a ton of cargo 100 kilometers for a dollar. That is why the freight market of our use sky system is huge. These are all countries in the world. It is the whole planet. Starts, stops, movement are all in automatic mode. We have an operator here who carries out these commands. He decided when to start moving, when to stop it. What is actually going on here? is not management, but control over management. Everything is controlled by the automatic control system that we designed. In the logic of controlling a complex, not a single vehicle. Because there will be hundreds, thousands of vehicles on the track and millions of vehicles in the road network. There will be moving at different speeds, being in different places, some of them being at the station, some of them in transit. There will also be freight transportation there. It is all supposed to be serviced in dispatch centers, where operators are supposed to monitor how everything is functioning, but everything will be operated in automatic mode. And only in the case of force majeure, emergency incidents, does a person get involved and make a decision to avoid it. It is also our great merit because we were the first to develop a control system for the complex. And before that, there were developed control systems for individual cars, like the Tesla car, and even this system has not been finalized yet, and control system only controls one car. That system doesn't control the next car, garages, petrol stations, roads, junctions, crossings, and so on, unlike us. The solutions are simple enough. Our dispatch room is not big, but it can serve all the complexes we are building in Sharjah all the tracks, stations, and vehicles. Could you tell us more about the other facilities under construction? If you take line number two, it goes here. The installation of 46 arch-type intermediate supports has been completed, 
and so has been the construction work on the first anchor support. Foundation and lower level of concrete walls on the second anchor support have been laid. Other construction and engineering work are in progress. This work is scheduled to be completed in the autumn of 2022. If we take line number 4, we are standing virtually underneath it. The installation of 8 intermediate supports have also been completed here. They are visible. The construction work and utilities have been completed on both anchor supports. Preparation for installation of the string rail track structure has started. We can see the scaffolding here, because here the installation will also go over the asphalt road and we have to install in such a way that the installation doesn't interfere with the traffic. The installation work of the first phase is now being completed. This is the assembly of the anchor nodes on the anchor supports. Preparatory work to connect the power supply is in progress. We have also scheduled the completion of all works for the autumn of 2022. We plan to put this line into operation by the end of this year. At the same time, at our production facility in Minsk, Belarus, we have designed and manufactured a new urban passenger model, UPOD. This vehicle has a capacity of 25 passengers and it will be operated on this line. The vehicle will reach speeds of up to 150 km per hour. The line will allow to reach this speed. So, we can say that all the works we have planned are progressing on schedule, despite all the difficulties and problems that we now have to face due to the particular geopolitical situation in the world. You spoke about the new model of urban transport that your Belarusian team was working on. What other work is going on at your head office in Minsk now? In Minsk, we are primarily working on commercial projects at the moment. There are a lot of them and they are at different stages of implementation. We have to keep in mind that the project cycle always takes a certain amount of time, sometimes years. We prepare an initial quotation, and then if the client's interest is confirmed, we go out for a feasibility study, and only then do we start the design work. This is quite a long stage. Sometimes it takes several years from the first meeting with the client to the contract. So, there are dozens of directions in parallel, with varying degrees of progress. As an example, I can cite our agreement with the Ministry of Transport in Dubai. We entered into a partnership and cooperation agreement with the RTA over two years ago about their needs of our string roads. And so far, they haven't even announced a tender yet. That is how long it takes to get ready for the tender. We cannot give away the project. There has to be a tender. In the beginning, even before the tender, there were about 30 bidders from all over the world. RTA hired experts to evaluate these technologies. They went all over the world to see what was available and what was an offer. Now, there are only five offers left, and I can say that we are among the leaders because our solution is the best for Dubai. The competition which I hope will be announced this year, will show everything. As you see, even the tender takes three years. In addition to commercial projects and related activities in Minsk and in the Eco Techno Park, we are constantly working on improving the technology. For example, a groundbreaking new concept for the high-speed vehicle has been designed, is being refined. And it is different from and superior to UniFlash in all key features, including the drag coefficient. We have improved the aerodynamics and therefore need a less powerful engine to get the estimated speeds. We have improved comfort inside. And in the high-speed vehicle variants for long-distance travel, we will already fit a sanitary unit. There will be a toilet, a sink. The unitization in terms of the composition of the two identical modules has been carried out. That is, when we combine the same modules into a mini-train, the possibility of establishing an additional section between them has been worked out. And then, this vehicle turns into a small train with a capacity of 25, 30, 40 passengers. We are designing new models of rolling stock whose potential in all systems meets the requirements that apply in extreme situations.
The design has been carried out in full compliance with global standards for design quality, including drawing on the experience of countries such as the USA and a number of European countries, with Russia and Belarus among them, of course. Work is also underway to upgrade the running gear of the rolling stock and to build 800-meter Line 7 at the Eco Techno Park in Mariana Gorka. It will actually duplicate Line 4 in Charja, which I told you about earlier today. Only there, it is for northern conditions and here in a tropical version. And to follow up on the research topic, the news recently broke that Yunitsky String Technologies has been granted the status of a scientific organization by the National Academy of Belarus. Congratulations on this occasion! Thank you! The status gained is a testament to the expertise and scientific excellence of our parent engineering company, Yunitsky String Technologies. It was a long and systematic process that took us a long time to get there. This includes years of painstaking work, the company's extensive research, and the many nuances of the law. All this became possible thanks to the ideas, daily hard work, and professionalism of our organization's employees. You could say thanks to the group of companies I set up, which employs around 1,000 engineers. Yunitsky String Technologies became the ninth private company in Belarus to achieve this status in its history. There are few organizations that enjoy this honorable status. Today, we have 11 PhDs, five of whom hold the title of associate professor, and more than 10 employees are engaged in teaching activities at various universities in Belarus. In the last five years alone, over 40 scientific papers have been written by the company's employees. For the second year in a row, one of the priority directions for the USD is to carry out R&D with state registration. In 2021, for example, five such works were registered. Not every research institute has this many R&Ds. Two of these works have been completed in due course, while implementation is ongoing for the other three. Three international scientific and technical conferences have been held with the help of the company. More than 100 scientific articles and five scientific monographs have been published by the staff. The in-house test center was accredited in November 2020, and testing is now well underway. In 2021, the concept for the development of science and innovation activities until 2025 was approved. Five meetings of the Scientific and Technical Council, which was set up in our company last year, have already taken place. Over the past five years, 95 protection documents have been obtained for objects of industrial property rights, two-thirds of them outside Belarus. Those mentioned ones have been received, and at least 100 applications have been submitted. They are now under consideration. Between 2019 and 2021, 20 Eurasian patents for inventions were registered. The first European patent was granted in 2020, and two Chinese patents 